My name is Dicart, and this is an overview of the City Economic Simulation DLC for the game Capitalism Lab. Whenever you get DLC for Capitalism Lab, you first need to enable it to be able to use the features it adds to the game. So you go into the DLC menu from your main menu, and you got to make sure that the City Economic Simulation DLC is turned on. All DLC work with all other DLC. So you can turn on or off any combination of them to add the functionality that you would like in whatever playthrough you're doing. For the City Economic Simulation DLC, there's an extra survival mode that must be turned on in this menu as well. We'll get to that in just a moment. One thing that the game adds is new scenarios. So if you click on New Game and go into Scenarios, you can choose the City Economic Simulation DLC. And you can see that they've added five new scenarios. You can play through those scenarios to learn more about the specifics that the DLC has added to the game, if you would like. So it makes a, a good tutorial. Another thing about the game, um, or, or that the DLC adds, is when you start a new game, under the DLC, there is City Economic Simulation DLC options that are specifically added for this DLC. So the initial cash level for cities, because in this DLC, you're going to be able to be uh, in control of a city, uh, including being the mayor and, and building the city from scratch, if you'd like. Um, global competitiveness ratings, we will uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you can set your capacity for your apartments and commercial buildings to make the game a little easier, or a little more difficult. Public expenses, basically the the um, operating expenses for your buildings. Uh, the land price index, how expensive the land is going to be to purchase so that you can build buildings on it and things like that. And then political parties, uh, donations, which we'll get into later what, uh, what those are all about. So those are some of the options that are added within the settings screen when you start a new game. So let's go back in here and back go into the dlc and we'll click survival mode and then we'll say new game custom game now when you click on here you can look in here and it adds this developed city at the beginning so you can choose to start with a developed city and just take control of it and start playing the game or you can turn that off and start from scratch so if you go into the game and look, starting from scratch means you're literally starting from scratch. See how there's no buildings or anything? So I'm basically the mayor of the city and I, I need to build it from scratch and try to build up the city. That's one way you can play the game. Um, it's really cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a cool little aspect if you've if you enjoy the game, but you kind of wish you had more control over the city, this is the DLC for you, that's for sure. Okay, so in the survival mode, AI companies are limited to five to simulate small areas not having too many companies interested in forming there. So you're not going to have a, a city and then have you know, 30 companies all trying to build in your city. That's just not realistic. Um, the, the next thing that's going to happen, uh, not necessarily every time in survival mode, but when you start new cities, a lot of times there won't be sea imports. You have to do it all yourself from scratch. Um, and then uh, another thing you can, uh, you can see is your nation report. And we'll talk about that a little bit later too. But, you know, different information about your specific nation. And we'll get into those in a little bit more detail later on. Okay, so that's one of the features is being able to start from scratch building a city. It's very cool the way they've set that up. Okay, so the next thing in the gameplay features will be city competitiveness ratings. You can get to that by clicking on information, going to cities, clicking on industries. And the competitiveness rating of all the industries of the city are listed in here. And the higher the rating, the more local people are employed in the industry and, and you will have a stronger export from your city. Research projects in universities can be funded to help raise the city competitiveness rating. So like this one, household products have a competitiveness rating of 31 in this city. 
City competitiveness ratings affect the performance of research and development centers. The higher the rating, the better the research and development performance. So in other words, in this city, I'm probably not going to want to do research on cosmetics if, if there's another city that has a higher city competitiveness rating. I would rather do it there because there are more people in that industry. My research is going to be a little bit better. So the next thing that the game adds are political parties. Go in here, we can go to political parties. Um, so that's just info and then political parties. And we can view the existing parties or we can start our own party. So let's let's do that. Um, now you can see right here you can donate to the different parties if you want, like conservative, democratic. But um, let's form our own and unity party, sure. Okay, so now we have our own political party and I'm the party leader. I can donate to the party as much as I want. So now the party has plenty of funds. Okay. Um, so once you have your own political party set up, you can, you can donate with uh, your own personal money or with corporate money. So company donation or personal donation. So you can use either one. When there's going to be an election happening uh, up to about a year before the election, you can have someone from your party, like right now we have two people in here, you can have someone run for mayor using the run for mayor button. That will appear in here once we're close to uh, an election. Let me speed time up a little bit. And see if we're gonna get this to show up. Oh, more people are joining our party. Excellent. Mayor election. Okay, so I can have one of these people run for mayor, and I can look at the people to find out if there's specifically someone I I want to run for mayor or you know whatever I want to want to do I personally don't care so I'm just going to pick uh, Monique here we go we're going to tell Monique to run for mayor and then once you have someone in your party running for mayor you can it turns into view election screen you can click that and now you can see the election information but right here you can set a monthly budget for the election campaign so we're going to set that to max so now we have a monthly budget for the election campaign for this person. That budget is going to help um, give them more support. So the more money you put in, the more support they're going to get for election. All right, and then let's fast forward the game. Boom. Okay, so the election has happened, and we won. So this person is now the mayor. As soon as that happened, you can see we gained a bunch of new abilities in here. So when a member of your political party becomes the mayor of a city, there'll be a new government mode icon at the bottom of the screen next to the date. So right here, government mode and business mode. Okay. When you're in government mode, you can do all sorts of uh, new things in, uh, in there. So it's very useful to know which mode you're in because it will change some of the menu options and you don't want to get confused. So just check which mode you're in. It's the one that's highlighted green will be the mode that you're currently in. So you use the government mode for issuing orders as the city government, and you use the business mode for issuing orders as your corporation. Okay, so when we're in the government mode, we've got all sorts of things. We've got the build menu, and there's a new one, land use planning. So in the land use planning tool, you can restrict different areas of your city to specific uses. So if you look here, this city is already zoned for certain things. If you, you can see it on the mini map up here. Okay. So there are, there are different ones. There's uh, any purpose, so you can zone so that anything can be used. There's mixed residential slash commercial. So either one of those could be built there. Residential zoning, so only residential, commercial zoning, industrial zoning, 
agricultural zoning and then not for sale. In other words, you can mark the land as not for sale so no one can buy that land. You basically lock it. And you can toggle right here with this button, you can toggle doing it for the entire city instead of painting in just small spots. So like here, see how I can paint just that little area? I can turn it on for the entire city and have it cover everything. Okay. So it's it's like many games you've played before, if you've played any basic city building type games where there's the three main zones, residential, commercial, industrial, but there's a few extra functionality in here um, for like the farming and, and restriction of land sales and things like that. Um, it's very interesting. Now, when you go to the build menu, now the building types are specific to the city uh, or government specific buildings. So civic buildings, police station, fire station, grade school, middle school, things of that nature. Okay. Instead of when you're in the business one, it's, you know, your department stores or, or uh, commercial buildings and things like that. All right, so the next thing is your automation tools for managing the city. And we saw that just briefly before. So you go to info, cities, and then mayor. Okay, so we're on this screen. Now these are the auto things for the city. You can turn these on if you would like your mayor to control more of the city side of things automatically, and you don't have to micromanage it as much. It's completely up to you. You can micromanage as much as you want, or you can have them kind of do it for you if, if it seems like much. But you can see, you can have them auto build civic, auto adjust the civic buildings. So if you hold over here, the computer will automatically adjust the operation levels of all the city's civic facilities for you. Um, it will set the operation levels based on the demands of the civic facilities. So it's gonna save money or spend money depending on what's needed. Um, manage media firms within the city. You can have them automatically do that, or you can do it auto build apartments, auto manage apartments, you can set the approximate rent level you want. And then commercial buildings, same, you can set the rent level. So it's really helpful in, in that regard. Okay, so once someone from your party is married, you gain the ability to use certain strategies and that's political influence. So once you, once you have that, um, there are certain things that you can do that you couldn't do before. So for instance, you can have the city sponsor research projects that target business sectors where your company has a significant interest. So let's, let's build a university since I'm not seeing one. Okay, so let's go here and, oh wait, we're in the business thing. Here we go. Ah, see, um, civic building, university. Boom, got a university set up. So inside the university screen, there's funding that you can provide, okay? And you can focus on a product. So you can select a product, and if you select to have the research in a product that you, your business is in control of. So like if I set up a cosmetics business, I could have my research and development going towards cosmetics in this city, which is going to help raise my city competitiveness ratings on that product, which is gonna help my business. So that's one way that I can help my business out by being the mayor. It definitely, definitely helps in that regard. Um, you can also build civic buildings around your businesses or real estate. So let's say, let's say this apartment complex. If this was controlled, right now it's owned by the government, if I controlled it with my corporation, like if my corporation built apartment complexes, I could then go in as the government and build civic buildings in the area to give it access to those civic buildings, you know, medical centers and, you know, schools, universities, whatnot. And that would make the, the life or the quality of life in this apartment complex raise, which means the property value goes up and the rent can go up. So you can, as the government, you can help yourself by increasing the property value, building specific civic buildings in an area around buildings that your company controls. So you give yourself a competitive advantage in that regard. You can also increase or decrease the corporate profit tax for your own benefit. 
Um, you can relocate competitor factories to the outskirts of the city and free up downtown locations for your company. So if I don't like someone's company being built, I can force them to move. So as part of my city planning, I can say, nope, you're going to move way out here. And now my competitors got a store way away from the traffic area. So I can move all my competitors away and just let my stores be close. Um, another thing I can do if I'm the mayor is I can purchase media companies for my, for my business. So I can purchase them from the city. And I can also do the same for those apartment buildings. So I can click on that and buy, and I could purchase it from the city. So definitely gives your company a, a major advantage if you're in control of a city. Um, the next thing you can do is if you select the map on the bottom bar and select a location, you can select build a new city. So when you build a new city, you acquire the exclusive rights to develop and run the new city for 30 years. You must donate $100 million to the city's treasury. So you can do this and become the mayor for 30 years. And then you build the city up. It's similar to survival mode we talked about earlier. So we're going to build Manila. And now we've got just a blank map. And we can start, we're the mayor, and we can start building the city up um, from scratch if we would like. So you can expand and build new cities in the game now. So you're not limited to what the game starts with. You can build your own cities and build them up as however you see fit, and just for your corporations and keep the other corporations out. You can do all sorts of stuff like that, um, much like survival mode. It's, it's very, very intriguing and very exciting if you like city building type stuff and city planning. It's, it's very cool. All right, so the next thing is sometimes when you're playing the game, if you go to the goals, um, yeah, build a new city, achieved, yay. Um, city goal, Manila. So now in Manila, I have a goal of hitting a population of 5,000. So one of the things you can do is um, unlock landmarks and the landmarks would be under the build menu there'll be a new option under here when you build one of those you can give it um uh, uh you have a choice of different buffs basically that your city can get so for instance um, you could choose a bonus effect such as decreasing civic building operating costs and things of that nature so if you complete goals, you can unlock landmarks, and those landmarks will help your city in whichever way you choose. It'll give you some options. So, you know, it's, it's very helpful in, in that regard. All right, so let's go um, back to another city, okay? And we go into Info, and one of the new things that has been added is the city report. So I'm the mayor of this city, so I can do these things, but there's all sorts of options up here. Here's graphs for the population, population growth, immigrants, emigrants, supply and demand index, supply and demand index for office space. This was for housing. We have this set of graphs, quality of life, real wage rate. There's also this little window that gives you information. Uh, unemployment rate and job openings. So there's a lot of graphs. That, uh, that you can look through in the city report. Um, economic graphs, income statement. So you can see a lot of stuff about the, about the city. Balance sheet, GDP, so you, consumption, investment, government spending, net exports, total exports, and total imports. And then overall GDP information. And all of these have some, some pop-up information if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them. Um, mayor, we already covered that. There's Here's the policies for the city. So you can set the tax rate. And I talked about the corporate profit tax rate you could change to give yourself an advantage. Um, so these are some policies you can change. This is the, the industries. We've already looked at this, the city competitiveness rating. 
you can see the quality of life of the people in the city. So as the city controller or the mayor, you can change things to, to help the quality of life of the people. And the better the quality of life, the more people are going to join your city, the more people that join your city, the more stuff you're going to be able to sell there. So it's going to be very helpful. Okay, There's public facilities, gives you all information about those, rankings, and then you can issue bonds um, and get more money. Okay, so then and then there's a lot of city report information. There is it's almost overwhelming at first, but eventually you kind of get used to it. The more you play the game, the more you know what to look for, and you, you'll have specific ideas like oh, I want to work on this food supply. So you'll know where to go to see your food food supply rating, and and you can make changes to affect that. Um, another thing that's new is the influence score. I talked about that briefly. So you can go to information you go to the score menu and you go to influence score and you can see your current political influence and your past political influence and the influence score is just a, a new way to basically give you a goal so in the in the vanilla game you want to become one of the top 100 richest people or something like that um now this, like here's the billionaires local billionaires there's none right now but you you know you're trying to get on this list well now there's a most influential people list that you want to try to get on if you want to make that one of your goals for the game all right uh, there are new goals that will appear in the goals screen there are, there are new goals that might pop up that weren't in the game before that have come specifically with this expansion all right the next thing you can see is a city's education level let's go back here um See, like on rankings, we have education. So you can see your city's education level, and you can also click on any school, any education building, and see the percentage of population with education from, and it shows you these things. Education levels affect the city competitiveness ratings and the skill levels of workers in all the civic buildings. So like the skill level right here, the higher your city's education level, the higher those skill levels are going to be, the better that civic building is going to run basically um so so city education level is something to keep an eye on you want to you want to have enough educational facilities to help build your education level within the city uh, there's a, also in the game a new store type so if i go back to my business go over here and go to retail store there's a new store type and that's the general store so just a big general store that you can put down and and sell many products. See, if I go back into here, if I look at, like, this can sell toys. This has four products, communication devices, electronic products, home appliances, uh, photography products. General store allows you to sell a lot of products. You're not going to get the benefit of the specialty store, which gives you a demand bonus, as you can see in the red on this. However, you can sell more things. So especially when you're starting a new city and you're and you're early in the game and you want to be able to have a a broader uh, market, a general store might be the cheaper way to go until you have enough focused products that you're creating or um, or you know you want to build multiple other stores to uh, get that uh, demand bonus. But they added that general store to kind of help out in the early game so you can sell a wide range of products to help kickstart things and get you going. Um, the last thing I want to talk about are some of the new minimap modes. So if you look over here, this is the population and pollution mode. So when I click on that, it shows my population density. So I can see up here, you know, this is the, the more dense area. Right, and then there's the population and public services mode that shows you the area in which the public services are more supported. So if if I build something in this general area, it's more it has enough access to public services that it's going to flourish more than say on the outskirts or or way over here because it doesn't have access to those public services. So when you're in this mode, if you look at a civic building, you can see quality of service. So the higher their quality of service, the the better they're going to be for your your um, schools and things. So it's going to help you out uh, just in general. 
All right, um, and the last one would be the central business district land value mode. So land value mode. See this red dot? That is there now to show you the central business district. So this is the general central district for businesses within the city. So yes, there's a population increase over here, like the land value is a little bit higher, but now it's specifically letting you know that this is the business location for the city, like the central, you know, you would say the downtown business district or something like that. Um, so that is a general overview of the things that have been added with the City Economic Simulation DLC. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this you found this helpful and it's gotten you interested in trying out some of these things. So it's definitely added a lot of depth to the game. It's going to give you a lot more replayability and you're going to enjoy it, I'm, I'm sure. So thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here and I hope you enjoy the game. Take care, everyone.